Thanks so much for the invitation to this wonderful event. I really think about data and digital health technology every day and, and it's near dear to my heart. The, the sessions today were amazing. I don't get the opportunity very often to sit and listen to professionals like you who think long and hard about really important problems. So, you know, whether it was the session this morning on PHIPAA modernization or uh, apps to deal with mental health or Kareem's talk on interoperability, these are, these are the issues that will drive digital health forward. And so I, I really applaud Kareem and his leadership in trying to position the Masters of Health Informatics as a, uh, as a leadership opportunity. You, you get the academic rigor and expertise of, of all the faculty, but then I think he's really trying to instill these ideals of leadership in, into all of you as you move from your Masters back into your professional roles, because digital health is as much about technology as it is about leadership and communication and change management. And those are all the really important ideals of leadership. The, the digital technology part of it is pretty simple. It is the relationships and the, the human dimensions that need the investment. And that, that's where leadership and collaboration and consensus building come in to be. And so the, the way that digital is evolving is it means that it's going to be more and more pervasive. And so today I'm going to touch on a few themes. First is, you know, the need for digital transformation. I, I don't think you will disagree with that, but I'm just going to reinforce it. I, I think digital transformation is a hallmark of every single high performing healthcare system. And we need to be the ones who are leading the charge to, to build that system up. And then once you have pervasive digital transformation, you know, what underpins that is, is data integration, which then gives rise to population health management. Again, another hallmark of high performing healthcare systems. And then finally, once you have pervasive digital capabilities and integrated data and population health management, you can really start thinking about how to improve the care experience and the quality of care. So these things are all inextricably linked. So that's, that's theme number one. Number two, the really important role of policy and regulation. And that, that is at the province level, that's at the level of Ontario Health, and it's at the level of your individual organizations. And they all need to work in concert for digital transformation to go fast and effectively. And then finally, uh, my own call to action to each of you as you go back to your organizations and your, your, your day jobs, and uh, hopefully you can propel your organizations towards the kinds of changes that we all want to see. So, like I said, if you look at any high performing healthcare system, they have pervasive digital capabilities and they have integrated data and they engage in population health management and they have integrated care systems where the incentives are aligned. And we're moving towards that in every jurisdiction in Canada. And I think these are exciting changes. So I, so I was speaking with Kareem when I came to do a guest lecture at one of his MHI courses. And we, we did a little thought experiment imagining William Osler. So how many people know who William Osler is? So yeah, a few hands. So he, he's, you know, one of the kind of titans of modern medicine. And he was one of the founders of Johns Hopkins. It was kind of the late 1800s. And he's often referred to as this kind of master diagnostician. And when he saw patients, more or less everything he needed was either told to him by that patient in front of him, or he could seek out, you know, by walking down the hall or, or, or you know, doing the lab test himself. And I would say in some ways, the clinical encounter is very much the same as it was when he saw patients. You know, somebody presents to you, they, they tell you their story, you're trying to pull out the signs and symptoms and, and, and come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan. So, you know, that part, pretty similar. But then in, in another more radical way, he wouldn't even understand the velocity and variety of information coming at you as clinicians today, you know, whether it's labs or images or reports from specialists. Um, and these are coming at you digitally in analog format through different systems. And, and within 
complex delivery and financial structures that would have confounded him. So, so in this sort of era of, of where you're seeing patients using the same kind of tenants that, that he wrote about and enshrined in medical education, but with, with a kind of a, a complexity that, that, you know, he couldn't have imagined, you know, that's where digital technology comes in. Like we, as much as digital technology has created an environment where I know a lot of burden is placed upon clinicians, it's actually, it's our way forward. So I think we need to really remember the importance of integrating and simplifying the digital experience for clinicians because it, it is the only way forward to be able to integrate all this complex information coming, coming towards clinicians and increasingly coming towards patients because uh, all this information is going to be delivered to patients simultaneously as we go forward. And so digital tools will help clinicians be able to interpret and synthesize and come up with treatment plans and it will help engage patients as well. So what have we done so far in Ontario? Do we do where where do we sit on that maturity curve? And I think I think we've made a lot of progress. And so I think of important tools like Connecting Ontario, which was mentioned today. And we and and we have three hundred thousand clinicians on average using that on any given day. And and it's the clinicians I talk to say they now can't imagine doing their job without connecting Ontario. And as much as the interface could use improvement and the electronic health record could have more assets in it to, you know, so you wouldn't have to seek out that information from other places. It's become a part of the way uh, care is delivered in Ontario. If you want to understand what somebody's hospitalization experience is or what labs they might have taken, that information all sits in Connecting Ontario, more or less. We have lots of integrations at the point of care. So if you're using an EMR in your primary care practice, it probably integrates with OLIS and it probably integrates with DHDR. So you're getting those things and you're probably getting the discharge abstracts from hospitals. And I know, again, uh, we need to make lots of progress to make those things as seamlessly integrated as possible and fitting into the clinical workflow in a, in a nice, uh, sensible way. One great thing about this event is that there are members here from academia, from industry, from delivery partners, from delivery organizations. And so it, it's a lesson that we need to bring all these communities together because if you leave a community out, you're not going to be successful. I can I can say that for sure. We also have an increasing number of yeah. referrals, which is great. You know, every day we're adding more and more primary care clinicians onto the sending side, and more specialists are signing up on the receiving side. So that's a big piece of the clinical workflow that isn't fully digitized, that is becoming increasingly digitized, which is wonderful. And the last panel that we had was fantastic. I had never really internalized the idea that virtual care could be a environmental sustainability maneuver as much as it is a patient preference because people like to be at home. And and William Osler certainly could not have imagined a fully virtual hospital admission. Yet in the United States, there are many systems that now have that as the standard of practice. Uh, you present at hospital and the initial diagnosis is made in treatment plan and then you go right home and you are followed by internists, specialists and all the telemetry from your health status is coming back to that kind of room that was spoken about and and we have examples of remote care monitoring that are working here in Ontario right now. Many of them started during the pandemic and the government invested in them and many of them continue. We also have a nice front-facing tool for Ontarians called Health 811 which took over the sort of telephone system that was known as telehealth and you can now chat online with nurse or call and for some select conditions which continue to grow it, a video visit will trigger with the nurse which is is really great news and i think that that engagement of patients and ontarians building more digital tools for for clinicians and, and completing the electronic health record really forms a lot of our thinking at the province about how to move the digital strategy forward and once you have digital tools and and more information in the electronic health record, you can engage in population health management a lot more effectively. And uh, I know, uh, Dr. Safar, this is a real interest of yours, you know, using information to find individuals who are 
in need of care, a test or, or an intervention that hasn't been offered that could be. Some of the presentations today were were of that nature on uh, wearing my academic hat. I, I, I do a lot of health services research and just completed a study with some internists at Sunnybrook looking at osteoporosis care gaps and like it's it's academically interesting to look at the number of elderly people discharged with fragility factor who don't end up on a bisphosphonate. But the next more impactful step is to reach out to the to the clinician and the patient and say, it looks like you should be on a potential treatment here. Why don't you talk to your doctor or or if it's going to the doctor, why don't you reach out to to your patient? Because you know evidence suggests they're they're really eligible for that. And you could think of a thousand different use cases where we could use the combined power of all of our information to reach out to individuals and, and, and offer them opportunities for care. And uh, we see this happening more and more in, in the U.S. and other integrated systems, you know, whether it's an accountable care organization or, or an integrated system in the NHS where, where they do have really seamlessly integrated data and you know, there are care managers who reach out and and in Ontario, it's taking the form of the Ontario Health Team, where, where groups of providers are coming together and trying to characterize the health needs of their population. And part of my responsibility is to try and digitally equip these Ontario Health Teams uh, with the tools they need and the integrated data they need. And, you know, I remember I, I read a book many years ago uh, called Provider-Led Population Health Management, written by some clinicians who are also IBM consultants. And, they, they used a case study approach talking about a bunch of ACOs and what was fascinating to me is every single ACO at the beginning of their journey, accountable care organization, went through a huge review of all their data. Uh, you know, they, they went through, uh, you know, what's our clinical governance and our, our care pathway going to be, but huge exercise in what kind of data are we going to use and how do we extract it from disparate point of care systems and put it into a into a place where we can use it to create meaningful engagement and meaningful information and insights for clinicians and patients. And, and I feel like that's, that's where we're at in Ontario right now, where, where our digital strategy is trying to do some of these things and where we're having the, the collection of care providers come together in these Ontario health team structures to be able to improve care for populations. One common theme throughout all of the talks was, you know, the need for uh, policy and regulation and standards. You know, the you'll you'll you, you'll see people who talk about health information standards is often talking about the rules of the road. You know, we we can drive safely with the expectation of arriving at our destination, knowing that we we follow a set of standards, and and we we can expect common behaviors from our fellow drivers because generally speaking, they're following those same standards as well, and. And it might be a simplistic analogy, but I, I still like it because it does say, you know, once you all buy into a common set of standards, you can get to your destination safely. And, and so I, I, I use that analogy with, with, with the people I talk to and my team to say, you know, one, well, if we can build consensus around what those standards are, uh, innovation and quality and sustainability will flourish because we won't be in these sometimes intractable arguments between organizations to come to the terms of the data sharing agreement because you know it'll all be codified in, in a set of standards. And I think you know Kareem's talk really emphasized that. You know, interoperability is the technical term for it. My kind of lay description is like let's just agree to the rules of the road. And and that's as much responsibility of the government as it is all of you and your individual organization. So I think everybody has a role to play there. The panel on PHIPAA modernization was great. One of my colleagues, Christine Sham, was, was on the panel. She's really leading the charge to think about how information legislation can support digital transformation. Uh, so I'm really pleased that was a panel. So I really do believe that we collectively need to regulate the flow of information such that we have that expectation uh, and that obligation codified within provincial standards and organizational standards. Uh, so I, I had this wonderful prep conversation with Kareem as he, as he was uh, asking me to take on this opportunity and he, he used the, the, the proverb, this wonderful proverb, if you want to go fast, 
go alone, if you want to go far, go together. And the, the load is too heavy for any one individual to move very far. And, and that's why I say, I think we are all in this together and we all have an incredibly important role to play. And so in my role as, as a provincial policymaker, I try to think about what are the rules of the road and what needs to be enshrined in legislation versus regulation versus operational policy. Uh, there were colleagues today from Ontario Health who work with all of you to do the heavy lifting of implementation and then you with your own organizational policies. So that, that brings me to my uh, call to action where I have three, uh, three asks of all of you. One is, as you move away from this event uh, and, and, and back to your organizations, take a system perspective. And, and that might mean you have to wait. You, maybe you don't do a procurement today Maybe you wait for a colleague organization and you do that procurement together. Maybe you reach out to your peer organizations or Ontario Health and figure out, are there standards that you're adopting that if I adopt would make our region a little more integrated or make our patient experience a little more seamless? Because we all have this goal of patient-centered care, but if we all have a different vision of it, it it sort of falls apart. So I, I would say that we all have a responsibility here as province, policymaker, all the way down. You know, second call is, you know, build to some sort of standard. You get, there's going to be a standard out there <laughs> for the thing you're doing. And and if you're getting to the point where you are, are inventing your own standard, like just stop for a moment and, and you know, do some double checking. Again, you know, call Kareem. He probably knows what the standard is. You know, make sure that you, you start with good governance that is that is multilateral, that has the different partners that, that are going to be impacted by the change. And when you're building architecture, you know, take some time to educate yourselves about what sits in the provincial electronic health record. What are the provincial directions? What is Ontario Health saying? And it's going to take a bit more time, but again, you're going to go farther and your initiative is going to be way more sustainable. My, my third call to action uh, is, you know, thinking about this, this post Osler form of uh, medicine where, where digital information is pervasive. And you know, Kareem talked about information overload. You are going to need to help your colleagues bridge into this era of algorithmic medicine. And it's going to require your clinical expertise, your, your change management expertise, and and, and, and your consensus building expertise. Because I, I, I do think the, the revolution is, is upon us and, and we're starting to see it pop up. I know that, you know, whether it's, it's AI scribes that are listening to the clinical conversation and, and summarizing it into the clinical note, like that's gonna be amazing and it's gonna save a lot of time or it's uh, Epic, the Epic information system, you know, embedding AI, decision support right into their tool. You're gonna to be the change champions here. And, and you're gonna to need to put your hand up and say, I wanna help my organization move forward because those who adopt are, are gonna bring those benefits to their patients. And, and I really do think it's this community here that are gonna be the champions. So I, I, I think you hit on all the important themes today. And, and I, you know, form a community amongst yourselves and stay in touch and move forward together. Because with all that, we can tackle any of the hurdles that have been identified today or any of the hurdles that, we'll, we'll, that you'll face because the promise of what we can do with uh, pervasive, seamless digital technology is too great to not achieve it. So thank you so much for having me. This has been an amazing event. Thank you so much, Michael. That was fantastic. I'm gonna ask you the question that the panel was asked this morning. If you had a one-time use magic wand, this is not a this is not a genie with three wishes, but just one magic wand, what would you wave it on? Your your vision statement, Kareem, of I, I think it was uh, moving from chaotically connected to a, appropriately highly connected, I think. So I, I love that because I think we're 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 connected now, but it's there's still too much frustration. So 
I'm not going to say any one specific change, but it would be to enable the collective set of changes required from policy to technology to change management to enable that move. And, you know, that could take the form three or four different ways. Like, you know, maybe it's, oh, we should all have one system or we should all have like strong interoperability standards. I'm not going to kind of weigh in on that, but I do think whatever the whatever we do, that it would all happen harmoniously and and we would have a world where the primary care notes would be available to the internist who's trying to figure out what's happening with the admitted inpatient and and they would be able to see the medication record and you can you can all imagine it in your head <laughs> and and i think i think part of our problem is you know getting the uh the required investment and building the consensus it takes time so my wand would be like to have that all happen in one massive bolus <laughs> and, and we get to that appropriately connected uh, future as fast as possible. So thank you so much for your talk. I think you wrapped up everything that happened today really well. Um, as you know, there we have a lot of students here. So a lot of us are in the yeah. Master of Health Informatics program. Myself, I'm in the second year Executive Master of Health Informatics program. And so in your talk, you mentioned the importance of leadership. So I'm just wondering from your perspective, as we graduate and go into the real world, like what areas do you feel like is you would like to see us take on this leadership role as health informaticians? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think uh, more and more organizations are having, you know, the chief medical information officer. So, you know, that's a really important role. So I would, but, but forget a specific role. I think the, I think the leadership opportunity is, is for all of you to be digitally savvy leaders who are thinking about what's the improvement opportunity that I'm trying to enable and how does digital support that? Because I'm sure it's been drilled into all of you. It's never about digital first. It's about the care model. It's about the patient. It's about the, the decision you want to make. And then once you've figured that out, how does digital enable that? And it's, it's to support all of your colleagues there because you're going to get knocks on the door saying, I need a digital solution for that. And then you'll start asking questions about, okay, well, have you figured out who your partners are? Have you figured out your care pathway? And, and they'll maybe look sheepishly at you and saying, no, not yet. And you're going to walk them through that journey. And then you're going to enable it digitally and you're going to do it in a, in a standards-based way that, that takes into account all those calls to action that I said. So I think that's the leadership opportunity to, you know, just help propel people forward and always remind them that digital is here to help. It's not going to be the answer because it, it's never about the process. It's about, you know, it's about the outcome you're trying to achieve. And then, you know, maybe, maybe you'll say digital isn't the answer for this. <laughs> There's something that doesn't need to be digitized, but I think it's to be that digitally savvy leader. Hi, my name is Shayi Badmas. I work at Kingston Health Sciences Center over in Kingston. And so I've had the privilege of working at the Lynn, working for an entire health team. I currently work in a hospital. And some of the discussions that I keep hearing across all the different stakeholders is we need a vision. And so I guess from your perspective, you know, in your role within Ministry of Health, when it comes to the Ministry or Ontario Health or the different OHTs, and we try and we talk about digital transformation within healthcare, where do you think that vision should come from? And like, how do we get to it? Well, I think, I think the, the government of Ontario lays out that vision. And if you look at like one of our foundational documents, your health, you'll, you'll see pieces of that, you know, whether it's the, let's get rid of fax machines. And, and that's the, that's kind of the catchphrase, but underpinning that means like, let's move to electronic communication. And, and then to do that, what are the investments and the initiatives and the change management required to do that? So, yeah, so I think the, but I think the vision, I feel like we've, we've bought into a common vision, one where we have integrated data that's easy to get. And, and then it's up to policymakers to listen to the community, bring that advice back to to, to our ministers, help support the business case, get the resources, implement the change, which then in turn you'll implement. You'll tell us a new set of facts and issues to deal with. 
will interpret that back, come up with a vision, validate it with you. So I really do think it's this very cyclical process where, you know, we're responding to the cues we hear from, from you as the sector and what we see from our scanning of different sources of information, try to formulate that into policy and, and then crank that cycle and ideally each time it's put through its pace that set of issues have been solved and we can get to the next set of issues so i i, I would say it's 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 cyclical right like we we listen we do our best to interpret and then we implement and then we listen again great yeah thank you so much